Hi all. Another absolutely excellent game was posted to the Leela Chess forums. So this is like Leela Chess Zero versus Stockfish Nine under Alpha Zero conditions. It's presented by Hans Eckbrand. He says uh, this is from a match between Leela T uh, the test server eleven zero three five and Stockfish Nine at a long time control and a Leela ratio of one, i.e. the same conditions as between Alpha Zero and Stockfish Eight. The game was played on consumer level hardware, so instead of 60 seconds per move, the number of nodes per move corresponds to 8 seconds per move in the hardware uh, deep mind used. On my hardware, the game took many hours to play. Stockfish 9 had 560 million nodes per move, and Leela had 640,000 nodes per move. In this game, Leela sacrifices, uh, okay, he, uh, okay, something. And then the tension is, is built for the game, which I'm about to show you. <laughs> so yeah, this isn't a bullet game then. It's, it's a little bit more accurately played than one of our bullet games <laughs> in a nutshell. Let's have a look. D4 from Leela. Knight F6. We have C4, E6, and we have now the Queen's engine defense, avoiding the mainline Nimzo engine. So Knight F3. The Nimzo engine player needs to know the Queen's engine territory as well, very well. We have B6 from Stockfish 9. G3, Bishop B7, Bishop G2, Bishop E7. And I remember in the Alpha Zero match, a D5 pawn sack being employed, ED like Knight H4. That wasn't used here. We see Knight C3. And I wonder actually if Leela will discover that pawn sacrifice later in its evolution. That would be really interesting. But for the moment, knight c3, not venturing into any sort of gambit. We have knight e4. Stockfish line logically locks down the e4 square. Bishop d2. This has been seen before. It's very theoretically uh, trodden. It might seem strange to give up voluntarily uh, the dark square bishop, but there's other factors in play here in the position. In fact, black castles, d5, f5. So this has all been seen before. Uh, black can be worse here on e takes because this, if we look at this position, this is very nice. This bishop's blunted out of the picture. It does seem more comfortable for white. Uh, so technically, a small advantage for white there. So f5, we have now. Queen c2 actually offering the dark square bishop. Knight takes d2, knight takes d2. a5, as though black's interested in this c5 square, putting a knight on c5. The knight hasn't got the natural route to get to c5, but it can go sometimes via a6. White consoles, bishop f6, rook a d1, and now knight a6. So that c5 square is that kind of an Achilles hill of white's position. Remember, black also has the dark square bishop. So is this a nuisance position? A3, knight c5, and this carries with it a positional threat of a4. So if white plays casually here, then a4 locks down the queen's side pawns, and it should be an even position. This is not such a liability, and it's difficult to actually attack that pawn from any angle for the foreseeable future. So I believe this is a valid lockdown. Sometimes there might be situations this is too committal, but not here it seems. Uh, so we have b3, so alpha zero, not <laughs> Leela's little sister, alpha zero, plays b3. Queen e8, rook f e1. It doesn't actually matter if this rook is used, it seems. They're roughly the same, uh, technically. Uh, we have f4, and you might think this is a bit odd. Why is the e4 grip being given up voluntarily? It does create some dynamic pressure on white's position, actually. Uh, if a move like uh, e5 instead, then that drops the f5 pawn. And this isn't a valid gambit. Although this looks a bit of a dangerous thing, this position hitting the queen, queen g4. This, this scenario is just favoring uh, white. The knight's protecting f2 here, hitting the bishop. White's very pleasantly placed here. So we have f4, knight b5, and this does imply not just a fork, but also d6 at some point might be handy. 
Uh, on knight c e4, the bishop can drop back and d6 here doesn't appear to do too much. For example, this scenario should be about even. So we have knight b5. Uh, bishop drops back to protect c7. Now b4, and it looks as though actually white has a positional edge visually, but it's very different, different if you're playing Stockfish 9. Whatever we have visually, if we're playing Stockfish 9, we know we're going to lose whatever happens. <laughs> Basically, because Stockfish 9 is so resourceful and tactically dangerous, it, we're going to get crushed in a short term horizon, wherever we do. But this is Leela playing. She can, it seems for the moment, keep control with Queen B3. And visually, it looks as though these pieces might be a little bit awkward, especially this bishop on b7. We see king h8. And now bishop f3 here. This does help keep control of the position. A move like e3, we might think is intuitively okay. But actually, if we look at this, fg activates the rook and queen h5. This scenario, though, actually, even without the light square bishop, it does seem as though after f4 in this continuation white might have a slight edge there is the h file to play with this might actually be okay for white but anyway bishop f3 was chosen not a move like e3 which you might kind of expect rook b8 and now d6 here and black this forces a big compromise so that was protecting the bishop in advance of d6 but this is a big compromise move and you might wonder why closing this b7 bishop and we have got some undertones of the alpha zero stockfish eight match because if you remember in some games the c8 bishop was victimized so why would this be the case of self imprisonment here well if we look at c5 actually fascinatingly bang and queen a4 and <laughs> queen a8 and the rook's kind of trapped. Black can insert this move and this move hitting f2. But after rook f1, the bureaucracy is over. The forms have been filled and we're ready to munch the rook now. <laughs> after knight c6, we can safely munch the rook without uh, too much repercussion. Uh, so on c takes, that's a total disaster. Just taking here for this fork. Queen and Rook and that's fine for white to do that so yes this self imprisonment of the b7 bishop occurs here so definitely now visually this has taken a step up the visual crushing level has been escalated <laughs> uh, so Queen g6 and now Knight c e4 we have now Bishop f6 you might think hold on instead of Knight c e4 Sorry, instead of bishop f6 here, you might think c5 here to open up the bishop. This situation is actually still quite comfortable for white, that situation. With the rook coming to the seventh there. Okay, so bishop f6, c5, locking out the bishop now. Bishop c8. It's not happy necessarily if it had feelings. Queen a3. B takes, B takes. We have Bishop B2, Queen A2. Now Bishop D4. So hitting C5. Has White actually overextended? This is the problem. Pawns can sometimes be overextended. And it's not just hitting C5 in some lines, but this F2 is pinned. And Queen G3 sometimes when White's not prepared for that. We have Rook B1. I'll give you an example of tactical disaster. Queen A3 to hold C5 fg hg and if knight takes knight takes bang queen takes g3 check tactical disaster and i'm winning the queen <laughs> yeah that is a disaster in major style as well <laughs> yeah look at this queen is also <laughs> targeting a3 here uh yeah it doesn't it doesn't really bear thinking about this position on king h1 things like bishop f2 and rook lifts and stuff like that after uh so 
yeah this this shows some of the dangers tactically of the position but Lila actually plays something really clever here faced with c5 and g3 issues at the same time super clever and it's our little friend on c8 is an underline is put through is this bishop blocked in or not and we underline well Leela does with a positional pawn sacrifice of the highest quality rook b1 is played so we have rook takes b1 rook takes the defender of the first rank has been removed and concretely after bishop takes c5 this was played on knight takes c5 we can still invade that eighth rank this position is very pleasant for white for example this kind of continuation fictional continuation uh, white ends up better so in the game we have bishop takes but now knight takes and the point is revealed a pin what does a pin represent a pin does represent immobilizing the opponent's pieces concretely not just abstractly so a form of positional play in a way not just a short-term tactical device but a long-term form of positional controlling the position so e5 was played here queen a driving the queen back so the pieces are becoming passive and now white Leela locks down the e4 break tactically there might be something for black to say if king g2 then e4 for example here knight takes and you'll note that is check if bishop takes here to try to drag the queen unfortunately it's check so disaster scenario one disaster scenario two again fg e4 and disposition even worse queen h1 checkmate so the king moves don't work out very well here let's try a pawn move e4 again this break you see we see that uh this position ends up just winning for black this ends up scooping some pawns up with check or a pawn and then uh, blacks a lot better than that after king g8 so white has to be very careful here so 94 locking down e5 is not just the bishop locked it's e5 so tip here lock down as many of the opponent's pieces as possible and pawns just just on the safe side to be on the safe side of prophylaxis limbs of which will be proud security in the wider sense of the position so knight e6 was played uh here on knight takes e4 yes it looks visually as though black's dead and it seems as though this should be safe enough for white for example this kind of continuation is good for white uh, or here is if black's not energetic white plays bishop d3 for bishop a6 here to exploit the pin actually so uh, knight e6 was played and we have king f1 knight d4 king g2 encouraging the knight to take the bishop because look we've got fantastic blockading knight on e4 that would be a, a positional beauty to have so h6 g4 locking down now this is really interesting Leela goes into Michael Adams mode Adams a top super grandmaster for many many years and he won the British Championship actually this year I think for the third time or something and he's the master of positional plan locking down pawns and I think he'd improve approve of what happened here Leela locks down slowly the king side pawns spider style locking down the prey so locking down here this is handy very handy to lock down e5 to lock down these guys okay so one lockdown seems to lead to other lockdowns in this tell Queen, knight b5 is played king h2 and some shuffling until this point e3 knowing that the rook cannot take here because it's not check a that's a good thing and it's tied down because the rook takes c8 so f takes f takes just to put that on the board this is winning the queen it has to be avoided so e3 you might think well why e3 it provides bishop e2 that's the reason so it takes that happens queen d8 king g2 protecting uh, the bishop officially now uh on knight c5 then there's check and knight takes d6 actually protects c8 gotta be careful so king g2 Knight c3 is desperate. And why did black do this? 
This is uh, the peak of immobility of Black's position. If we look here, say King G8, this Bishop E2, and this is actually a, a good preliminary uh, move, it seems technically. So Bishop takes B5, and then Knight G3. This scenario uh, is killing. You can see there are things like Knight E7 now, Rook C8, and Knight E7 check here. So here, Rook takes C8 is absolutely winning. Uh, so an alternative on move 47, Rook E8, just, just to give you the gist of what's happening. Taking here, and then Rook C5. And again, it's just really domination. Uh, again here, let's just give another gist. Say Rook G8, Bishop C4, and then Bishop takes his best. And then again, this Rook C5, even if there's a check here, this line is a bit of inviting some tactics. The knight controls e2 and e4. The bishop still pinned. Uh, this is a desperate check. White's just a piece up. Thank you very much. So this is the point of breakage where material is lost because of the immobility issues. So Lila cashes out here into a winning ending with rook takes c8. Now there is some technique here. So knight and bishop against rook. And it's not hitting any table bases. There's too many pieces on the board for table base territory. So this is what happens. Yeah, it's very, very difficult for black to hold this position. Uh, this is hitting the rook. The bishop then protects the knight. And then e5 is going to be the next target. It's first of all, it's it's blockaded temporarily there. It's blockaded with the king. Then the knight comes around. And yeah, some maneuvering. Rook's attacked, and Leela's careful not to go into horrible pin situations herself. Now being able to safely take that pawn, making progress past e pawn is pushed. Very very nice technique, as one ex one would expect, even without table base. Look, no table base needed. Past pawn created, it's winning. And the game continued to actually its conclusion. So some echoes of Alpha Zero, but not yet the D5 Gambit, which I loved in the Alpha Zero match against Stockfish 8. By the way, I've created an Alpha Zero playlist just earlier prior to this video. If you want to check those classic games and see what I'm talking about, the Queen's Engine was torturing the C8 Bishop in some cases. But this game was C8 Bishop Torture. So Leela's learning some tricks from her elder brother, Alpha Zero. So I hope you enjoyed this one and got some insights from it in immobility and stuff like that. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.